Microwaves, the final frontier for amateur radio. It comes with unique challenges and big rewards. VK3, KU, uh, good contact on 24 minutes over. Thank you very much for that. Yes, it is a good contact. VK3, AV, how come? Microwave offers access to relatively large segments of the radio spectrum. If you live in an elevated area with panoramic views, you're in a lucky minority who can work the microwave bands from home. If not, going portable is for you. This is a recruitment video. We need your voice on the higher bands to help secure their ongoing availability around the world. This video will point you in the right direction for equipment and resources, and hopefully spur you on to get active in microwave. The new kid on the block is ICOM's first endeavour into microwave. Launched in April 2023, the IC905 was the first radio of its kind, featuring 2.4 and 5.7 gig bands, with an optional 10 gig add-on. ICOM's IC905 has made accessing the microwave bands a lot easier for those who just want to dip their toe in the higher frequencies, but it does come at a price. All things considered, microwave equipment as a whole can be quite expensive, so it does pay to do a little local research and find others in your area with similar interests. Nine centimetres, or the 3.4 gigahertz band, is missing on the IC905, mainly due to global access to the band being withdrawn to the amateur service. In Australia, we're lucky to still have 100 megahertz of the 9 centimetre band accessible between 3.3 and 3.4 gigahertz. The higher in frequency, the faster the data rate. So commercial demands on our bands by telcos and infrastructure organisations such as internet service providers is growing. The 10 gigahertz band is definitely in the sights of commercial operators along with 23 centimetres. Using these bands is probably the best way of maintaining access to them in the foreseeable future, which is why we need operators like you on the microwave bands. Electromagnetic energy travels in waves. It spans a broad spectrum from very long radio waves to very short gamma rays. The human eye can only detect a small portion of this spectrum, called visible light. A radio detects a bigger and different portion of the spectrum. The microwave spectrum is usually defined as a range of frequencies, ranging from 1 GHz to over 100 GHz. In Australia, the microwave bands are available to two of the three license types. The foundation license doesn't have access to the microwave bands. But that doesn't mean those who hold this entry-level license can't experience microwave communications. Microwave on a hilltop is a level up from sitting in the shack. After all, that's where microwave belongs. Field days and microwave activity days promote portable operation. They inspire personal bests, and who knows, 
you may break a record or win a contest with contacts over greater distances than can be achieved from home. By getting involved with radio clubs and field days, even reaching out to local operators, Foundation Ops can give these bands a try. The experience may even encourage a licence upgrade. You're in the log, VK3ER portable, VK3KQ portable on 24 gigs. VK over to you, 3FS, 3KRD portable, over, over. Standard licensees have limited access to the microwave bands. 23 centimetres, which is available in a commercial radio such as the IC9700 or the new IC905, as well as the 13 and 6 centimetre bands. Looking good, so good to catch up with you over there. 13 and, and 6 uh, centimetres are easily accessible due to the abundance of gear made for Wi Fi. The advanced licensee has access to all microwave bands. Microwave, as far as the amateur radio community goes, starts at 1.2 gigahertz or 23 centimetres. Some operators stop here and don't go above this band for many reasons, but mainly because it's equipment related. The now ubiquitous ICOM IC9700 has been in circulation since 2019. If you can, why not get your station active on 1296.1? Or if your passion's FM, move your local chat to 1294 megahertz. Thanks for the contact, Andrew. And uh, yeah, I'll be around. Uh, there's a few guys in Ballarat with uh, 10 gigs. Uh, Chris uh, ACG is also here with 10 gigs. And uh, Bernard uh, 3AV, he's got everything up to 3.4. He's working from home in uh, King Lake. so. Uh, that gives you an idea of what's going on this morning. Let's take a look at the microwave spectrum in Australia. Microwave is usually defined as a range of frequencies ranging from 1 GHz to over 100 GHz. This range has been divided into a number of frequency bands, each represented by a letter. But in amateur radio, we normally refer to them by frequency. The popular four bands are 13, 9, 6 and 3 centimetres. If you're keen to dip your toe into this aspect of the hobby, there are some great resources at your disposal. On Facebook, the VHF UHF microwave group for VK and ZL is a great place to see what others are doing and ask questions. Also, have a look at the Brisbane VHF group. There's some great reading on their website. Dubus is an international amateur radio magazine intended for the serious VHF and up operator. It's a German publication in both English and German. There are four issues each year, each of over 100 pages, which are devoted to a mix of state-of-the-art technical articles and DX operating news. Australian microwave activity features often in this magazine. In the first editions of 2021, Rex VK7MO shares his 10 GHz experience with rain scatter and the new Q65 mode with a contact between VK and ZL. It's a great inspirational read. If you're in Australia or New Zealand, you can subscribe to Dubus by contacting Alan VK3XPD whose details are on the Dubus website. 
It's an annual subscription of around $50. Don't underestimate YouTube. Many amateurs publish their microwave activity. The comments section is a great place to ask questions. Finally, contact your local radio club and see if they've got members active on the microwave bands. Many clubs such as the EMDRC in VK3 and the Brisbane VHF group take part in VHF UHF contests. And here's an opportunity to tag along and experience microwave activity firsthand. Microwave activity days, also known as MADS, are ad hoc events organised on a local area basis. The purpose of these days is to get out of the shack and go portable. In VK3, this can result in as many as a dozen or so stations statewide enjoying the great outdoors. Before we take a look at the bands, let's talk about the equipment you'll need and where to get it in order to get on air. You can certainly build everything yourself or you can buy equipment to fit the bill. The IC905 is certainly an option for those time challenged or inexperienced in microwave builds, which makes it a great option for newcomers to the microwave spectrum. Like everything in this fabulous hobby, microwave is a big rabbit hole. There are many distractions as well as many challenges. If you already own a QRP radio, then building a transverter will most likely be the most cost-effective way to begin your journey into microwave. Just a cut, cut over nine, just seeing the little uh, red of the over nine, so uh, quite a good signal there, Andrew, and uh, I'll leave a break for Rob because he should be... Generally right speaking, there are three parts to a microwave station. An IF radio, a transverter, and an antenna. Sequences such as the Minikit's EME166 kit can be used to control components like antenna relays, power amplifiers, or receive preamps. A good IF radio is a QRP radio that supports 2 metres and 70 centimetres. Two of the most popular IF radios are the Yaesu FT818 and the IC705. Priorities getting ready for the RD contest next weekend. So. QRP radios don't have ALC spikes that some high power radios tend to have. ALC overshoot or power overshoot is caused by the basic flawed design of ALC circuits and RF power control systems. This RF power spike in the first few milliseconds can destroy a transverter as transverters tend not to like RF inputs greater than a few watts. The FT818 or 817 is a great workhorse and is half the price of the IC705. But if the budget can stretch, the 705, like the 905, has a waterfall, which makes hunting down any wayward signals much easier. Both radios ground switch TX, which makes keying transverters easy. The IC705 can even delay the RF out after transmit by up to 30 milliseconds. A transverter is a device that consists of an up converter and a down converter in one unit. Two good reliable sources of quality transverters is Kuhn and SG Laboratory. Kuhn is a German-based company and SG Laboratory is based in Bulgaria. Kuhn transverters are a work of art. Exceptionally well built and designed, they're robust and easily configured, but they do have a hefty price tag. Kuhn recently changed ownership and is now owned by Alaris, a South African based company and its focus seems to be moving away from amateur radio. From experience, you can't go past the SG Lab transverters. They also come with a PCB antenna, which performs pretty well. 
This means you're on air with just one purchase. Popular antennas for microwave are parabolic antennas, grid packs and panels. Recently, Neil VK3BCU and I put an SG Laboratory 3.4 gig PCB antenna to the test over a path of 77 kilometers, which was pretty much clear line of sight and two thirds of the path was over water. Robert VK3KRD and Neil were portable on a dirt road adjacent to Mount Koroit, which is northwest of Melbourne at an elevation of 200 meters. In this test, Neil was pointing away from me, so the starting signal was through his body. He then turned 180 degrees to face me while transmitting. Now you are pointing away from me, around about 80 kilometres away across the bay. You're pointing away from me, and uh, just go again, Neil. I'll see how strong you are. No preamps or anything. FHCK3B here off the back of the beam. If you can call it a beam, a little printed circuit board antenna, VK3FHCK3B for you. Yeah, no strength, Neil, but Q5 audio. So just hit the transmit button and swivel around 180 degrees. Okay, 180 degrees, coming around. Coming around 90 degrees, 90 degrees, pointing towards Robert. Coming around, coming around, and I'm pointing roughly towards you right now. Yeah, and you're back up to S9, which is uh, terrific. That's a really nice signal. Neil then swapped out the PCB antenna for a panel antenna and I kept the PCB antenna attached. In conclusion, the panels will give you a few S points over the PCB antenna. But if you're after a lightweight kit to climb a hill with, the PCB antennas are worth the inclusion. Let's take a look at some of the bands, starting with 23 centimetres or 1296. Uh, I hope to be later on. Yes. 23 centimetres on the IC905 claims 10 watts with a shared N-type antenna jack. Transverters are a good and cheap alternative. SG Laboratory make a 23 centimetre transverter and PA, which delivers 25 watts. It also comes with a PCB antenna, not that you want to run one of these at more than a few watts. Yagi's biquads and grid packs are popular on 23 centimetres. If you don't want to make an antenna, you can pick up a grid pack on VK Classifieds or eBay. Even companies like Antenna Amplifiers in Serbia make incredibly well-built 23 centimetre antennas that just work. Accessible to standard and advanced licensees, the band to cut your teeth on would be the 13 or 2.4 gigahertz band. This band is near the 2.4 GHz Wi-Fi allocation and as a result there's plenty of gear readily available. Both the IC905 and SG Lab Transverter will give you a good 2 watts. There is an abundance of Wi-Fi grid packs on eBay starting at around $100. If you have a good takeoff, you'll find a couple of watts is more than adequate to work 100 kilometers or so. At this frequency, short runs of good quality microwave suitable coax is a must from manufacturers such as Times Microwave. If you're in a densely populated area, you may have to compete with Wi-Fi noise. Next is the 9cm band or 3.4GHz band. Just above this allocation on the spectrum is the new 5G mobile phone allocation. This band has similar characteristics to 13 centimetres without the Wi-Fi noise. Air conditions have returned to normal, so we've heard you were uh, testing with Rob. This band is missing on the IC905. But 3 watts from an SG Lab transverter into a panel, grid pack or dish is quite capable of going the distance. Going portable with this band to a mountaintop or lookout is easy. In this example, 
An SG laboratory transverter sits snugly into a die-cast aluminium box with a battery pack consisting of three 3.7 volt 18650 lithium ion batteries. These batteries are perfect for high current while maintaining good voltage. Something like this with a PCB antenna and a lightweight IF radio is just the ticket for easy portable outings. 3.4 gig gear is not as easy to find compared to other bands which are more commercially in demand. Five point seven gigahertz is another band open to both standard and advanced operators. As it's near 5 GHz Wi-Fi, there are plenty of small parabolic antennas available. You may even find panels for this band. This frequency is getting beyond the realms of the grid pack as they become a little porous, although some operators do use them. The IC905 produces 2 watts, and the Kuhn transverters are probably a good choice for this band although they only have an output power of 250 milliwatts. SG Laboratory sells a 10 watt linear amplifier, which is a great addition to the Kuhn transverter. This amp requires just 12 milliwatts drive. It also fits perfectly into homemade 5.7 gigahertz transverters. So if you like to build gear, this amp should be considered. or three centimetres is a band full of surprises and a transverter is the most cost-effective way to get on the band. Kuhn transverters are robust and very well made. 250 milliwatts at 10 gigahertz is more than enough to get you going. The IC905 has a 500 milliwatt 10 gigahertz module, which loops through the 2.4 gig antenna jack. In this example, Rob's IF was a Yaesu FT780R. His antenna was a 600 millimeter prime focus dish. His takeoff to the south, despite being rather high, was not totally unencumbered. At Mount Martha, my station's IF radio was an ICOM IC705, and my antenna was a 750mm offset dish. At the focal point was one of Paul W1GHZ's dual band 10 and 24GHz feed horns. Both Rob and I were using Kuhn 10GHz transverters, with an output power on average of 250 milliwatts. With a beeper transmitting from Mount Martha, it was up to Rob to do the fine tuning. There you go, success. <laughs> 10 gigs. That's Andrew 3FS on 10368.1. Uh, uh, it's about 80 kilometres. Above 10 gigahertz lies the start of the millimetre wave bands. These bands belong to a bunch of hardcore, real microwave enthusiasts. Peter VK3QI has recently built a 47 gig station with homemade waveguide and a Kuhn 47 gig transverter. Roger, roger. Antennas on the microwave bands are very high in gain. And in Australia, we're horizontally polarised. 
A 60 centimetre dish will have in the order of 30 dB gain, which means 3 watts will end up about 3 kilowatts of focused energy. Care needs to be taken when using these antennas in public spaces to ensure people don't walk in front of them when you're on the air. So now it's down to business and over to you. 13 centimetres is a great entry level band. If you have an IC705 or an FT818 or a similar QRP radio at your disposal, you're halfway there. Head over to SG Laboratory and find the 13 centimetre transverter. Send an email to Houston LZ5HP in Bulgaria and get a price on a transverter. To land one of these, it'll set you back about 156 euros plus shipping and it comes with a PCB antenna to get you going. Find a friend and get two. Not only will you have someone to experiment with, it'll keep your shipping costs down. Hit up eBay and find a 2.4 GHz grid pack for home or portable use. They'll set you back $100 plus. Use good quality coax, not RG213, and be sure to keep your cable runs short. Mark at Minikits has quality Comscope CNT400 coax. He'll even put connectors on it for you if you need. That's all you need to get started and get on air. Sure, there's a little bit of configuring like choosing an IF frequency and getting your transmission method sorted, but that's an easy process. VK3SF uh, portable, uh, VK3 KRG. Portable, uh, on, uh, Here in Victoria, there's plenty of local microwave activity on an almost daily basis, especially in and around Melbourne. This is also the case in southern Queensland with the Brisbane VHF Group. There are plenty of experienced microwave operators who would be more than happy to lend a helping hand. You'll find them in radio clubs, email groups and Facebook groups. Don't forget YouTube, where you'll find plenty of how-to videos that may inspire or just give you a few ideas. I appreciate that, Paul. Thank you. Look forward to our next contact. So now you have no excuses. Get on the air and use these bands that we're so lucky to have access to. Catch you right down the track of BTS3, FS3, KRD, clear and uh, going forward. Yeah, cheers.